Hello. How are you? Fine. Good. Look, here is my face. Here is my uh, room, which I call the Skypod. Here is my microphone. There's a there's a pink gorilla. Thank you to Jairo who bought it for me. Nice. Um, in this video, I'm going to. Uh, well, you're going to see me recording the intro to this episode of the podcast, which is number 408. So you're actually going to see me doing it live. I hope it's exciting for you. Uh, I've no idea. Anyway, you're not going to get the whole episode, but just the first uh, the first part, the introduction, all right? So I'm going to try and do the whole thing live. You're going to hear the jingle. Then you're going to hear me talking about the introduction to the episode. And then, um, and then the video will stop. Mm, okay. All right, then. So this is like a bonus thing, little bonus extra feature for uh, those of you who are visiting my website. Uh, so hello to all the website lepsters. Um, I just thought you might find it interesting. No idea if you will. Anyway, let's get started. So I need to play the jingle first and you should be able to hear that as well. And then I'm going to get started. The I've written this intro down because I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can. I've decided to... Well, you'll see. You'll see. All right. So here we go. And I'm going to press record on that. This thing here, which you can't see. And then we're going to start. All right. So. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Luke's English Podcast. How are you doing out there in podcast land? I hope you're doing all right. Here's a new episode, and this one sees the return of the pod pals Amber Minogue and Paul Taylor, which means that the talkative trio are reunited on the podcast once more. Uh, time was pretty tight for this conversation because Paul was working to a very strict schedule on the day that it was recorded, which was yesterday in my flat. As you will hear, Paul arrives a little bit late because he was having lunch with some TV industry people and then he has to leave before the end of the recording to be interviewed on the radio because he's so hot right now in the world of showbiz. Um, Amber has also been very busy recently doing various things, including writing and rehearsing a play. So it's been hard to get the three of us in a room together all at the same time. As a result, this episode was arranged at the last minute and the conversation was completely unplanned. All I wanted to do was to catch up with the two of them and ask them the usual question, what have you been doing? Um, so you will hear that things carry on quite rapidly and there are plenty of the usual tangents, those moments when the topic suddenly goes off in a different direction. It might be hard for you to follow, so to help you keep up, here is a basic summary of the main things that we talk about. And you'll find these notes that I'm reading from here in this introduction written on the page for this episode, including some words that you might hear in the conversation but you don't know. Um, like if you hear certain words and you're like, what's that? Oh, what's that? I, I don't know that word. Check the notes on the website. You might find that those words are actually written there. Um, you might want to check out these notes to see any words you've missed and to check their spellings and things like that. Okay, so here's a rundown of the uh, things that you're going to hear in this conversation just to try and make it a little bit easier for you. And here's some background music while we're doing it. All right. So, first of all, Amber tells me about the play for children that she's been working on with our friend James Simpson. Paul then arrives. You hear the buzzer buzzing, the door buzzer buzzing, and he comes in carrying a bag containing a new iPhone 7, still in its box, which he collected from the shop earlier in the day. It's a present which all his friends bought for him a few months ago for his 30th birthday, organised by his lovely girlfriend. We all chipped in some money and got him a new iPhone. Not bad. We're, we're good friends. <laughs> Amber tells us some more things about her play, including how it contains a few slapstick moments meaning some funny scenes of fairly violent physical comedy involving a first aid box and some marshmallows. Apparently at one point in the play, James hits Amber over the head with the first aid box. 
By the way, a first aid box is a box that contains basic medical supplies for administering first aid. That's why it's called a first aid box. It contains things like plasters, bandages, antiseptic, tiny scissors, and maybe some other things that no one really understands. Also in the play, they fight over a marshmallow, which Amber wants to dip into her tea. And this leads us to talk about dipping things into cups of tea, like marshmallows and biscuits, which then causes us to talk about what you put in your tea when you've run out of milk, which actually happened to Paul the other day. His solution was to use whipped cream as a substitute. Whipped cream is, whipped cream is that stuff that comes in a kind of a can and, you know, you squirt it out of a can. That's whipped cream. And that leads me to ask the question of whether you really can put cream in tea. And we agree that you can definitely put cream in coffee, especially a particular type of coffee which is served with, whip, with whipped cream on top, which in France is called a café viennois, which I think translates as a Viennese coffee or a coffee from Vienna. And that causes me to ask what they call a Viennese coffee in, in Vienna speculating that they might just call it a coffee, which leads to a similar question about the French phrase creme anglaise, which, tra which translates literally as English cream. But in the UK, we just call it custard. Are you following this? Are you managing to keep up with this? I hope so. This is meant to be the explanation to help you deal with the uh, conversation later on. So custard. I then ask Paul and Amber to explain to you, my audience, what custard is. And Paul suggests that instead of us explaining it at great length, you could just Google it. I then remind Amber and Paul that it's necessary to explain some words sometimes, like, for example, the word custard, because this is Luke's English podcast, and it's probably a good idea to explain words sometimes. This then prompts Amber to comment on the way that I seem to choose to explain words fairly randomly in my episodes, like when I recently spent quite a lot of time explaining the word flea in a recent conversation I had with my dad on this podcast. We then go back to talking about food and we talk about typical English puddings which can be served with custard, including crumble, sticky toffee pudding and the oddly named spotted dick. I refer to spotted dick as a dessert, which causes Amber to comment that it's actually the wrong choice of word and that I should say that it's a pudding, not a dessert. This brings up the slightly confusing and long-running debate about the correct choice of words to describe certain things in Britain, especially in relation to the dinner table. This all relates to British rules of etiquette and uh, language in polite society, perhaps relating to French vocabulary that we sometimes use in English. We don't talk about this very clearly and it might be a bit confusing for you. And really, the whole subject of the rules of British etiquette and social class deserves an episode of its own. But nevertheless, in order to clear it up a little bit, here is a quote from a book called Watching the English by Kate Fox. Kate Fox is a social commentator who writes about social behaviour in England. And Watching the English is a good book that explains many things about English life. And this is what Kate has to say about the words pudding and dessert in English. Oh, and by the way, both these words are used to refer generally to sweet food which is served after the main course. You have the starter, then the main course, and then the pudding or dessert. And your choice of the word pudding or dessert seems to depend on your level of class. And apparently, according to upper class culture, the word dessert is vulgar. And so this is what Kate Fox wrote about, uh, about this in her book. She wrote, The upper middle class and upper classes insist that the sweet course at the end of the meal is called the pudding, never the sweet or afters or dessert, all of which are déclassé and unacceptable. So according to upper class et etiquette, pudding is the correct term for the sweet course that sometimes comes at the end of the meal. Fine. Amber seems to think that this is because the word dessert is of French origin, but I'm not sure. By the way, in some places, for example in France or in Japan, pudding is a specific kind of dish. For example, in Japan, pudding is a sort of caramel or custard cream dish. But in the UK, it just means the sweet course at the end of the meal 
and can include all kinds of things like cakes, pies, ice cream, trifle, eaten mess, bread and butter pudding, or even jelly. For example, you might say, what's for pudding? You know, what's for pudding? Oh, we're having cake, for example. Hopefully it's cake, because cake is obviously the, the best uh, thing in the universe. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, cake is the best thing in the universe. That's a fact. All right. I'm getting completely sidetracked because I'm multitasking because the music turned off and I'm now trying to find some more music to have in the background. Here we go. All right. All right. So, um, so what's for pudding? Now, I try to explain all of this, but I can't manage it. Instead, I end up saying this is Tangent City when I realised that we keep going off on mad tangents and it's probably quite confusing for the audience. That's you. Our talk of pudding then causes us to start talking about Pudong, an area in Shanghai, and specifically the Pudong River in Shanghai. Paul tells us a little bit about that, and then there are a couple of references to the slightly rude-sounding English words poo and dong. Before things settle down a bit, and we start talking about Paul's recent showbiz news, including how he's going to be interviewed on a radio station called We FM later in the afternoon. So we go from poo to we in just a few sentences. At one point, Paul nearly uses quite a clever word, the word concise. But then he doesn't use it, preferring instead to choose a more simple way of putting things using the least words possible, which actually means like that's actually a synonym of the word concise. Are you still following this, ladies and gentlemen? There will be a test at the end. There won't really. It's just a joke. So, we then talk about responses to Paul's recent videos, including a few YouTube comments and some criticism he received from a very serious person in an email. The, the criticism was in the email, not the person. You can't put a person in an email, not e even a serious person. Uh, things then get quite geeky when I start talking about cameras and microphones and the challenges of capturing good audio when you're recording videos. And there's some talk of different types of microphone, including boom mics, lapel mics, dynamic mics and shotgun mics. But then Amber decides it's all getting a bit too geeky and we move on to something else. We make plans to hang out again on Thursday on the set of Paul's TV show while they're doing some filming, and we decide to record a podcast while we're there. So that might be an upcoming episode. It might be a podcast outside on some kind of TV film set. TV film set? Does that make sense? TV set or film set. Yes. Um, following on from my recent episodes about accents, I ask Paul and Amber what their accents are and what they think my dad's accent is. And we talk about that for a little bit, and then Amber declares her love for my dad. Apparently she loves him. Um, then Paul has to go for his radio interview on We FM. That's We, the French We. O-U-I. We meaning yes. So Paul has to go for his interview on We FM, and he leaves. And Amber and I carry on and talk a bit more about her play before having a massive conversation about Christmas, which will probably be uploaded in a forthcoming episode. So, I hope that that helps you understand what you're about to hear from the tangential trio in this conversation. But now, without any further explaining, here is that conversation as it actually happened. And here is, indeed, a certain jingle which I'm trying to find on my computer because I'm, I'm doing this all live. Um, here is the Amber and Paul jingle coming up right now. Here it is. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on another podcast. Paul's a very funny boy. His laugh I very much enjoy. Amber's got a lovely voice. If I could choose an accent, hers will be my choice. Yeah. Okay, I've paused, because that's the point at which, in this episode, if I choose to upload it like that, I might do that whole episode, that whole introduction again, because it seemed a bit kind of chaotic, and it seemed to go on a bit too long, but that's kind of normal, isn't it, in the introductions to my episodes? Yeah. Some of you might be thinking, why are you telling us all the stuff that's going to happen? Why are you doing that? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because this is a podcast for people learning English. And when I play a fast-moving conversation, even one that's an enjoyable conversation between friends, it does help people out there 
uh, who are listening to this stuff, it helps them to understand. And if you can understand the general context of the thing that you're listening to, it does help you to pick up words and it does help you to enjoy it and and deal with with the bits that you don't understand more easily. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is take what I've just recorded and put it into um, GarageBand on my computer and then stick it you know, at the beginning of the episode. I've also got an outro to record. That's where you record something, um, you know, you've got an intro and an outro. So I'm going to do the outro as well. But that's the end of this video, which I think I'm going to put up on YouTube in a moment when I publish this audio. Okay, right. Thanks for watching and uh, speak to you soon. But for now, goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.